Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. Today I have some tips that I think will make keeping fish a bit easier for you. So let's go ahead and jump right into them. My first tip is don't waste time and energy in scrubbing down artificial plants like these that you see here. Just don't, don't bother. It, it takes a lot of time, it's a lot of work, and they usually end up still looking dirty when you're done. And if you scrub them while they're in the tank, all you do is just spread the junk all over the tank. Instead, take the plant out and put it in a bucket. Just put it inside of a bucket, just like this, and put about a quarter cup of uh, regular bleach, make sure it's not scented or have anything different, just straight bleach, quarter cup, fill the rest of the, of, of the uh, bucket with water and just let it sit overnight. The next day, dump it all out, give it a real good rinse with plain water and then fill the bucket up again, except this time add some conditioner like um, Fritz Complete or, or uh, uh, maybe Seachem Prime, something like that and let it sit for about 24 hours. By the third day, you can take that plant, I usually give it another rinse in plain water and I can drop it right back into the tank and it'll look just like new. So uh, don't, don't spend a lot of time scrubbing artificial plants, especially really real uh, detailed ones like this one here. These are like a perfect home for, uh, for algae, brown, black algae and it, it's just next to impossible to get it all. The way you can really clean them up is just simply soak them overnight, 24 hours, and when you pull them out, they'll look like this one that just went through the treatment, they'll look like new. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, do you have a, a power strip that has four, six, eight, ten, depending on the size of the power strip, uh, things plugged into it and if you need to go and unplug something in a hurry you have to go and sort of trace it back from the aquarium to the strip and if it's under the tank or uh, very tangled it can be a real pain in the rear. What I suggest you do is the first time you plug something into that strip take one of these. These are just little uh, bread bread loaf fasteners. You get these on any, any loaf of bread Probably other products have them too, but you can see one here. And then just take a, a black marker and just write on it. And in this case, I want to be able to get to, uh, to one of the LEDs. So just LED. So whenever I want to get to the LED that's on the right side of the tank, this is what I would go ahead and get. LED right, and that'll be on that wire and make it uh, on that cord, making it very easy to go ahead and uh, find it immediately and unplug it without having to trace things back from the aquarium, which is just a waste of time. Another tip, have you ever had, uh, have you ever had buckets that you just couldn't pull them apart? I mean, they, you stacked them together and maybe they were a little moist when you did it and they've created some type of a seal that now makes it almost impossible for you to pull them apart. Uh, that's happened to me. It, it gets very frustrating. You know, you have to get a hammer maybe and tap it down. I mean, it's just a, just a pain. So what I suggest you do is just simply take the handle, take the handle of the, of the bucket that's on top and just put that handle inside the bucket below it. This makes it instant, instant to pull it out, easy to put back in, and there's no, uh, there's no suction, there's no seal, right, and there's no vapor lock that occurs, and so you can move them in and out easily, and I tell you, I hate having to battle with my buckets to pull them apart when I need a bucket. I use buckets to uh, transfer plants, rocks, uh, sometimes substrate, and with the smaller nano tanks, I might use them for water changes. So uh, it doesn't have to be the handle. You can use um, uh, towels to separate them. You can use pieces of uh, 
um, like little pieces of wood. You can get creative with it. I found that the handles inside the bucket below it works perfectly. It's almost like Excalibur, you know, trying to remove, you know, Excalibur from the stone, trying to take these buckets. <laughs> this next tip is for those of you who have, uh, who have Fluval, Fluval filters, FX series filters. Get yourself uh, some one inch hose. In this case, I've got, uh, oh, I think what? I got two 10 feet, I think two 10 feet pieces, maybe 20 feet of hose. Way more than I need now because my Fluval FX6 is right up against the back of the garage. This is when I was in California, so I could do it all the way from the living room to the, uh, to the garden. But get yourself uh, some one inch clear hose and you can use the one that's on the Fluval if you don't mind disassembling and reassembling. Or you can do what I did, just buy one of these, get online and buy one of these valves, one of these top valves, and attach it to the hose. And then go ahead and turn your, turn your hoses off, right? Turn them to the off position. So they're cross, you know, so they're, they're, uh, they're crossways, right? Crossways on the flow. So they're off. And uh, turn your hoses off, unplug the fluval. Then take the output, the one that returns water back to the tank, and pull that one off. I suggest you use a towel around it because there's some water that gets trapped in this section. Pull it off, put this on, right? Go ahead and uh, uh, make sure it's secure, right? You push this button and slide it on nice and secure so it clicks, clicks into place. Then go ahead and plug the fluval back in and then open up the, uh, the input and the output valves and you will be able to drain your tank as far down as you want with this hose going into a sink, going out to your garden or lawn, uh, whatever you want, the fluval will work as the siphon. You can do it with the, uh, with the motor on or the motor off. If the motor is off, it'll just work as a standard siphon and it'll reduce the water level in your tank very, very quickly. The 300 gallon behind me, uh, that's how I'm gonna be uh, lowering the water level and maybe doing a little touch up vacuuming under the rocks. But for the most part, the water change is gonna consist of attaching this to the fluval, right? Then plugging it back in, opening up the valves, and then just letting it flow uh, out into the backyard. So that's a tip for you folks that have fluvals. My next tip, my next tip is Always keep a ledger, always keep a ledger. Whether you add fish, uh, start medicating, do a water change, remove fish, uh, add a new type of media, remove a type of media, anything that you might do in your aquarium, keep a ledger. This is one that was given to me by Seahorse Aquariums over in Ireland. But you can go ahead and keep it on the, on the notes of your phone or like some of you know, I have a dry erase board here in the fish room with a, uh, a sort of a, a floor plan and I keep notes next to each uh, tank that tells me what, what I've done. And this way you're, you're thinking, okay, well, for example, on this tank, I have two, I have two hang on back filters and I wanted to go ahead and service one of them. So I went to the, to the board and saw which is the one that was serviced the longest time period ago. So one of them was serviced seven, uh, one was serviced about 15 days ago, one was serviced about 20 days ago. So I went ahead and serviced the one that hadn't been serviced in 20 days. And so it just gives you uh, a sensible way of tracking. Plus it allows you to see if there's any change that you've made in the tank that may have uh, resulted in something undesirable. Like let's say you, you started using a new media, but you notice that your tank is fogging up or it's not as, cl as clear as it used to be or maybe you stopped using some product and your tank is now cloudy or whatever the case may, may be. So keep a ledger, um, take some notes, write them down, especially if you have a, a fish room with you know four or more tanks, uh, definitely uh, consider doing that. Uh, my last tip for you, and I hope this one is helpful for you, is, uh, is just one word, and that's timers. This is an old, uh, very old timer I had laying around. I'm not even using it anymore. 
but it's three prong. It's kind of a nice timer actually. Uh, use timers on anything that you think uh, should be on for limited amounts of time during the day. This could be your lights, this could be your um, power heads or wave makers, uh, anything that you want to run for only a certain amount of time each day, instead of having to remember or, or, or come in and, and switch it on or off, just use timers. You know, you go to bed, you forgot to turn your tank off, the fish were you know, lit up all night till the next morning, and now they all have bloodshot eyes, bags under their eyes, and they're all acting groggy. So uh, avoid that. Have a timer that you know, at 10 p.m., whatever time you want, it shuts the lights off. You don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to think about it. So uh, timers, for me, uh, they're like a godsend. I love using timers. So those are just a few quick tips I just wanted to share with you to help make life a little bit easier for those of you taking care of fish. And if you have some tips, this is the, uh, this is the video where I want you to share them in the comments below and let's let everyone know what your best time saving uh, tip is, uh, what, what has saved you some time and some effort and that you think every fish keeper should know about, share it in the, uh, share it in the comments below and we all, we all learn from each other at this channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's on Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Time. That's noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Great discussion with a great group of fish keepers. And it's called Cichlids and Coffee, but it doesn't matter what kind of fish you keep. Salt, fresh, community, nano tanks, monster tanks, monster fish. It doesn't matter, come on down. It's a great group of people. Also, if you'd like to support the channel and you think you're getting something out of it, be sure to hit that, uh, that subscribe and the uh, thumbs up and the bell and let YouTube know something good is going on. And also, if you'd like to subscribe, consider becoming a Patreon and that is a Garage Gang member who commits to a monthly, um, a, a monthly contribution to the channel. Those really help and have helped me to complete some of these large projects that I've been involved in recently. All right, that's it for me. Thank you, my friends. You're the best, and I'll see you on Saturday. Bye-bye.